What's up YouTube, it's Adam from I'm a Music Mogul. In today's video, I'm gonna show you one of Logic's hidden gems, which is smart controls. Now, I love smart controls so much, and I think you guys are gonna love it too by the end of this video. Maybe, I mean, you guys can let me know in the comment section below if you like it as much as I do or not, but I'm gonna show you anyways and uh, tell you why I like it and how I use it. So first step we're gonna do is create a software instrument track. And we are, of course, gonna bring in a software instrument. So here's my ESC synth, and we're gonna bring up the smart control window by clicking this icon over here. So here is our smart control window. You're probably already familiar with it. You, maybe you have a Logic uh, Pro remote app on your iPad, and you always see these knobs when you bring up a synth. Now, the cool things about these knobs is that these are actually tied to parameters within your plugins, whether it be a built-in plugin in Logic, or an external third-party plugin that you downloaded off the internet. So if I turn my cutoff over here, it's gonna affect my cutoff in the plugin. So that's all cool, fine and dandy. Logic's already did a preset for me here, but if it was a third-party plugin or you wanna manipulate this setup, we're gonna have to go and customize it because well, Hey, we're musicians, we have external MIDI controllers, we wanna have everything customized to our liking, let Logic work the way we wanna work. So first step I'm gonna do is go to this over here. Just click any one, anywhere in that line there, and go delete all patch mappings. So right now it's all set to unmapped because I wanna create, well, my own setup. So it's very quick to do. All you have to do is hit learn right here. Leave that selected select the first knob that you want to be affiliated with a parameter in your plugin and start turning away. So I got my learn on, click my first one here. I want my first knob to be wave. My second parameter to be cutoff, third one to be resonance. My fourth one to be an attack. My fifth one to be a release. And finally, my last one to be the volume. Now I'm quickly doing this. You're obviously gonna take the time to find out your method and how you want to go about, well, programming your own smart control. So that's done for that. So if I go ahead and hit a note on my keyboard or my controller, I can quickly manipulate that plugin by turning some of those knobs. But as you can see, I was doing it with my mouse. But in fact, if you're anything like me, you have an external MIDI controller with a bunch of knobs and buttons that you can actually program from Logic that you can use. So you can get away from the computer screen and actually work on your external controllers. So that's right over here, your external assignment section over here. You're gonna go ahead and hit learn, select the knob that you wanna program on your external controller, and well, you guessed it, turn the knob. So my first knob is here. Sometimes this window may pop up. That's your controller assignments window. Just close that. I'm just gonna do that again in case I didn't pick it up. So that's my first knob is over here. Second knob is over here. Resonance will be on this knob. And I'm turning this knob on my external controller. Release is gonna be on this knob and my volume is gonna be on this knob. That's it, I'm gonna go ahead and uncheck learn over there. And I've just completely mapped all these parameters to my external controller. So if I go ahead and hit a note on my controller and start moving the knobs. It will basically apply whatever I'm turning on my controller straight to this plugin, which is cool. Now the next step, we're gonna take it a step further and save this patch, because every time we open up in an ESC synth, we don't wanna to have to redo this. So what we do is we go right here. This is the way I save it to make sure it saves everything. You go to settings, save channel strip setting as, and call it what you want. I'm gonna go ahead and just call it um, user preset for ESC. Oops, I did USC, whatever. 
you do whatever name is good for you. So next time I bring up an ESC synth, all I need to do over here is go over to my library over here, go to user channel strip settings, and select the one that we just saved or select the one if you have a bunch of them here, and it will open up an instance of the ESC synth. Just as we had it, and it will work on your controller. One more thing I did want to show you is that you can change the name of each of these titles over here. So if I want this to say Adam, and this I want to say hello, you can do that. You can manipulate each name to make it the way you want it. And of course, you can go ahead and uh, change the way this looks. So if I want this to look in, um, let's see here, if I want it to look like something like that, you can go ahead and change the way it looks, but you may have to change all your parameters a little bit around. Again, they're just knobs and buttons, but every one that you change may have a different kind of layout. Uh, depends if you want to change the look. Most of the time you don't need to because just the look, you just want the actual functionality to work. If you have any questions on this, you can ask me in the comments section below. Let me guys know what you think of smart controls and well, you'll see how quick it is to program your external controllers to your built-in and third-party plugins. For more regular videos, remember to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching as always and remember that more great videos are always coming soon and I'll, guys talk, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Later.